move against Grindelwald. It has to be you. Hello once again watchers of good movies, my name is Nick Pell and this is my review of Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Now I'll be honest, I am not the biggest Harry Potter fan, I've seen all the movies, I've read all the books, and I've seen Fantastic Beasts and I did a review on it two years ago when it came out. And I enjoyed that film, I've enjoyed all the Harry Potter stuff, I'm just not immensely deeply into it like a lot of people are. But the first Fantastic Beasts movie I liked enough, I thought that Eddie Redmayne was a very interesting and good protagonist, he has quirks to him, he had a good supporting cast, and it set up an interesting story. So when the sequel was announced and is now out, uh, I was pleasantly excited for it. Um, so let's talk about if this thing could live up to the hype. As you expect, Eddie Redmayne is back once again as Newt Scamander. He is this guy who's very fascinated by beasts of the magical world and knows a lot about them and they come into play once again. Primarily ones from the first uh, film, such as this uh, twig type of creature which can um, pick locks and the, the mole type of... Thing, which um, finds like shiny objects and things like that and so a lot of the beasts from the first film make uh, reappearances in this one and have similar roles I just you would expect. Supporting cast also do a pretty good job. Uh, Catherine Waterston and Dan Fogler in particular I thought stood out for me personally. Dan Fogler is a more interesting standout for me just because he is a muggle and so he has more of a comedic role. He's kind of seeing this world through our eyes as the audience. And the general cast chemistry works really really well. I especially enjoyed Eddie Redmayne's chemistry with Dan Fogler and um, with Jude Law as Dumbledore. I thought that that all worked really really nicely and it just made the film work better than I kind of expected it to because the film for the first two thirds is boring. If you saw my review of Ant-Man and the Wasp earlier this year you'll know that my main issue with that is that I basically spent the whole film just trying to find this one person and then basically ended. The film does a very similar thing. It's a lot of these characters all trying to find Credence, uh, Ezra Miller from the first movie, and basically trying to track him down and for figure out who he is essentially because he doesn't know who his family is, his identity, things of that sort. And just a lot of this film just felt like setup material for the next three movies because it does basically serve like that. I feel like the first Fantastic Beast film was basically testing the water, seeing if fans would respond to this new character, this new setting, things like that. And since they did, it made a lot of good money, it made decent reviews. Uh, they decided to push forward for the series and now they're basically setting up the, what the next couple films in the franchise are going to be. But that doesn't excuse it for being a boring story regardless. There's also some really weird camera shots here and there throughout the film, particularly with Eddie Redmayne's character um, and another character throughout the film, uh, just where it just literally just focuses on their face and nothing else in the scene. Um, it just goes back and forth. It's just a really awkward way to frame a shot, I thought, that it just seemed really, really, really weird. I also noticed that there are some parts uh, where the camera was just kind of shaking or just kind of you could just see it moving on the sides and it just wasn't nearly as smooth as I, as I would have expected a film like this to be. Uh, it's, it's very minor things but it's just things which I noticed which kind of bugged me. And then there's also some really awkward silly moments here and there throughout the film. It is supposed to be kind of aimed towards teens, kids, that type of demographic but that doesn't make it okay I think at least for it to have these just really awkward like is that silly ridiculous kind of scenes. Um, there's one particularly towards the beginning which I just kind of shook my head at and got me ready for a not great Fantastic Beasts Harry Potter-esque film. The special effects as you expect are really really well done. It's probably the best part of the film aside from the cast chemistry uh, just because the creatures all look fantastic and it I had to actually think afterwards, like, oh yeah, those aren't real. Uh, that's just how good they actually look on screen. The spells and all that stuff looks also very, very good on screen. There is one spell which is very heavily abused, which I thought was really strange, because in the Harry Potter films, uh, you don't really see it come out that much, at least towards the first couple. It's more present in the latter ones. Uh, it's a green spell, if that gives it away. Um, it's just heavily used a lot, and it just kind of bugged me in how... How readily people are just like whipping that out. Just weird. 
It was a lot less time in London in the 30s, apparently. Like I said, the third act of this film, however, is easily the best. It's where everything kind of comes together. We get to actually see the meat of what this film is going to be with Grindelwald. Um, Johnny Depp also does a really good job as this character, I thought. He doesn't have a lot of screen time, but what he does kind of establishes what we are to expect from him as a character. And there is a part towards the end of the film, um, during this dramatic speech that he's giving, uh, where I do kind of emphasize with what he is going for in regards to his goal because uh, he shows the scene of a future, uh, which I won't go into, but it's just like, I do kind of get what you're going for and it does make a little bit of sense in regards to why he's doing what he's doing. Um, I don't know whether his motivations will change over the next three films, presuming that he's around for all those three films, but it does make me sympathize with the character a little bit more than I was expecting to, so I'm just kind of curious to see what they do with that character as the film goes on. But guys, overall Fantastic Beasts, The Crime of Grindelwald, it's fine. It's not going to blow anyone away. Um, I had a much better time from what I remember with the first Fantastic Beasts film, uh, but this one is it's not as exciting. It's not as fun. It's really just more of a setup movie. If anything, you could probably just rent it before the next third one comes out, 2020 or 2021, whenever that one debuts, uh, and you'd probably be be just as fine. Like I said, the third act is easily the most exciting part of the film, so try to stick around for that part. Um, and then the cast chemistry, all the actors work really well together, and the special effects are top notch. So guys, those are my thoughts on Fantastic Piece, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Let me know yours in the comments down below. Did you like it as much as I did? Did you hate it more than I did? Let me know. Like, fair comment, and subscribe. Once again, if you choose, I appreciate it immensely. And as always, my people, my name is Nick Pell, and once again, Keep on watching.